Welcome to Against the Grain Sports, and I'm your host, Jody Coleman. We got our co-host, Gerard McCain. Sports all way. Well, once again, we're back. We want to thank all our viewers and all the, the, the things we got on Instagram, the, the, the attention we got on the website. We have over five, close to 5,000 viewers within a month. We just want to thank everybody out there from the bottom of our heart, from Against the Grain Sports. We definitely want to thank everybody. Yeah, actually, that, that first show we put up is almost at 7,000 views on Google Plus already. Right, and if you told her to Facebook, we're going to close to 8,000. Yeah. 8, 8, so that's definitely phenomenal. We want to thank everybody for watching and, and tuning in and giving your comments and your feedback. We definitely thank y'all. But we're going to go right into our opening statements today, and I'm going to start with Gerard. Go ahead and give your opening statement. My opening statement is the Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight will be the highest gross in boxing match, period. My thing is college basketball. One and done, it's a joke, and I'm going to tell you why it's a joke. But let's go ahead and go right into the topic of discussion. We had the big Super Bowl that ended at 28-24. Yeah. The New England Patriots won on some controversial calls that uh, Jamaica Garrison, one of our writers, she wrote about it. You can check it out on the Against the Grain website. Uh, you can check it out on there. She wrote about it, about the, you know, the... The play that should have happened, yeah. or maybe didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, how, how would you say it? Is it a play that didn't happen or a play that did happen? Um, I, I just thought it was a bad call. It, 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 was, it was a bad call. That's the name of the, the article, bad call or bad QB instincts. I think it was a little bit of both. But I'm going to have to go against the grain on you. So the simple fact is, Russell Wilson makes excellent decisions. Now, if Russell Wilson makes that catch, are we talking about this right now? Or are we talking about how Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson is celebrating his second Super Bowl? Well, we would be talking about him celebrating his second Super Bowl, but that didn't happen. So what we're talking about now is a bad call and a bad play. So what should have happened? I mean, what everybody in America thought should have happened, Mr. Skittles should have got the ball and ran it in. I mean, the guy was pretty much running over everybody the whole game. Why not let him finish it off? So what happens if they stack up the line and they stop him? Would that have been a bad, bad play call, America? Uh, they would have had another chance at least. Okay, but let's say they stopped them again. And now, <laughs> you would have had to at some point put the ball in the air. At some point, Russell Wilson, the guy is, is a cerebral quarterback. He could have ran it himself. He could have. And actually, if you look at the play, it really wasn't a bad pass. We just had, to, I think it was an even better defensive play by Butler. I mean... It was a bad pass. Let's let's, let's go was ahead. Bad? Let's let's go ahead and say that Be because it was a little bit behind the player. I mean, the guy was able to just jump in front of him and take it from him. I mean, potentially it could have been a pass interference call, but it wasn't. The but, game is over with. They won the Super Bowl. And, and I mean, anytime I, you lose on a play like that, it's a bad call and it's a bad play. It, it's easy to say that a call was bad when the play didn't go right, but I I, I <clears> truly <throat> believe if Russell Wilson had completed that pass, they would have said it would have been one of the greatest passes of all time. It would have. If, it, but that's why great passes are completions, not interceptions. Well, let's go back and let's recap the Super Bowl. I picked the Super Bowl winner at 27-22, and I said it was the New England Patriots. You did. And, every, I mean, I, I'm not tooting my own horn, but if you look back, I told you the key to the game was Darrell Rivas, and do you know that Doug Baldwin only had one catch in that game? Even though it was for a three-yard touchdown, it was one catch, and he was basically ineffective in that whole game. I mean, pretty much everything you said on that show came to fruition. I mean, from the score to, you know, the, the New England defense shutting down or keeping in check the Seattle Seahawks offense. It, it came into fruition. I think that you don't want to take anything away from Pete Carroll. Uh, how can you make excellent play calls and all of a sudden, you know, it was a definitely questionable call. I, I, I will agree that it was yeah. a questionable call, but you cannot think that the game came down to one play. If you allow the game to come out of one play, then it's some, it, you can't do that. And they allowed the game to come down to one play. Yeah, but, you know, that's, that's the beauty of a Super Bowl. I mean, you know, that, that's what everybody – pays their money to see. You want to see a close, exciting, and drama-filled game and ending. 
And you did say that it was a, a team, both teams were evenly matched. Right. You did say that, and I definitely would agree with that because, I mean, it was a battle from start to finish. It was. You know, it was. It was. It was. But once again, Tom Brady, and I said it again, America on Against the Grain Sports, I'm, I'm going to cry because I was right about it. I was going to cry. <laughs> Give me a second. Tom Brady is the best all time. He is. He He's is. the best of all time. We almost got Russell Wilson throwing the pass to himself. I mean, I, I at still, the end of the game, I still never seen at that. At the end happen. of the game, the guy, but it, it never happened. He caught the pass on the ground. I mean, that doesn't really count. But listen, Tom Brady, best of all time. Anybody in America that want to give me a better resume than Tom Brady? Four Super Bowls, twenty-nine playoff wins. He leads all quarterbacks in history in yards. He leads all quarterbacks in history in touchdown passes. What else more do you want out of a quarterback? He's four and he's four and two in Super Bowls. He's been to more Super Bowls than anybody else, and he's still going. He's at a young thirty-seven. I mean, I, I have no argument with that. I mean, he's clearly the best in my book. My also, thing is, my thing is Peyton Manning. Who? I don't know. He does pizza commercials. Yeah, he's like, he's too busy doing Papa John's commercials, man. But let's go ahead. That was the Super Bowl. Wonderful Super Bowl, wonderful way to cap this uh, excellent season. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of go over the NFL season and how do you feel about Aaron Rodgers winning the MVP? Kind of give me your thoughts on Well, that. we just talked about the real NFL MVP and Tom Brady. I don't need to revisit the stats you just threw out, but I don't understand how you can have a guy win an MVP and he didn't even get to the Super Bowl. Well, I, I have to go against the grain on you once again on that one. My MVP, who was completely robbed, was J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt is an absolute dominant force. We have not seen a defensive player this dominant probably since Reggie White or Lawrence Taylor. This guy had 20.5 sacks. He had five total touchdowns. He caught, he caught three touchdowns. I mean, two touchdowns. I'm sorry, two touchdowns on defense. I mean, offense. And then he had a fumble recovery. The interception recovery. This guy did it all. I think he actually served some drinks in the concession stand too. And still, the Texans didn't make it to the playoffs. But they went nine and seven with a very subpar quarterback situation. But they still didn't make it to the playoffs. Nine. So you have to, you you saying that every MVP has he did his part. He did his part. I mean, being an MVP is more than just doing your part. It's about getting the team to where they need to go. And he did a lot, but Houston was still at home during the playoffs. But you did. The thing about the MVP, let me give you let me give you scenario MVP, situations on MVPs. You cannot base it off of postseason aspirations or experience or whatever you want to call it. You cannot you cannot base the MVP off of that. You can't base it off of those numbers. He had excellent season numbers. He's the MVP of the season, not the MVP of the playoffs. Okay, but they still didn't make it to the playoffs. He's going to be stuck on that. Yeah, on that. I, I'm just saying like. Uh, an MVP should at least be able to get his team to the playoffs. I mean, okay. is that too much to ask for? I, the most valuable player in the NFL? And I, You know what? I'll, 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 I'm, I'm just saying. I'll go ahead and I'll give you that. But I still think J.J. Watts was, was, was robbed on that MVP. But let's talk about the coach of the year. It was Bruce Arians of Arizona Carter. I want to say congratulations. Do you think he deserves it? No. Can you no. can elaborate why? Um... The Arizona Cardinals, I mean, we're talking about the Arizona Cardinals. They did go 11-5. Oh, okay, but we're still talking about we, – you still got a player in Larry Fitzgerald that will not resign with this team. So how good of a job did this coach really do? I mean, your your star player doesn't even want to return and play for you. I, I think it's more than that. I think that the quarterback situation is in, in jeopardy. You have Carson Palmer coming off his – will be a second knee injury – major knee injury surgery and we don't know those other backup guys definitely didn't feel the bill but my thing is the court the coach i felt like should have won should have been jason gary from the dallas cowboys i'll agree and the reason why i I'll said agree. it should have been him was the simple fact that the dallas cowboys was picked to be the last team in their division to finish last he turned a team that was that was just, that historically ended up being the worst defense in nfl history last year yeah he did and now all of a sudden they're serviceable this year after losing their top defensive player in Sean Lee for the season. And then all of a sudden they come back and they play their middle of the pack and they go 12 and 4. You know, my, my analysis on that is 
there was one play that kept Dallas from moving on in the playoffs. And if that play hadn't happened, we might be talking about a Dallas Cowboy Super Bowl winner. And I think that they had all the tools. When you look at you look at the offense, they had every tool. I think they may have the best set of triplets with Tony Romo, DeMarcus, uh, DeMarcus uh, Murray, DeMarco Murray, I'm sorry, I don't want to mention the name of and um, Des Bryant. So let's kind of go into the season, and, and it's over. We had an action pack. We got our MVPs, got our awards. Tell me a little bit about what you expect and anticipate next season. Well, I anticipate a lot of new quarterbacks and a lot of new teams. Uh, these guys who are basically getting paid to just be out on the field, we – they need to sit on the bench. Who? Let's, 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 we, hey, we drop names on the Kiss of Grand Sport. Who? Everybody is losing. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like a lot of the teams that are losing. Um, I'm going to even throw some teams in there who's winning. I, I'm going to go with my home team, the Cincinnati Bengals. I think maybe Andy Dalton might need to sit down. Let's let's see what A.J. McCarron can do. I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go against the grain again. And, and you always defend this guy. I, I, I'm going to defend it because the numbers – did you know he made the Pro Bowl for the second time yes. in four years? Somebody has to play the game when they're in the playoffs. Listen, he's on for in the playoffs. I get that. But he has went four times. And the Cincinnati Bengal fans are so spoiled as if y'all are a great organization. Spoiled. Y'all are not a great organization. How are we spoiled? This is the first time that a quarterback has taken y'all to the playoff four straight seasons. Not even Boomer Sizer. They were happy years. with that. They, I mean, they're losing in the first round. Y'all was the worst season. team of the 90s. So what? Not only was y'all the worst team in football, y'all the worst team in all those sports. So what? That gives him the pass to just keep losing still? So Maybe it's not we're the, supposed to be okay with just him getting to the playoffs? Maybe it's not the quarterback. Maybe it's the coach. Him too. He needs to go to. But uh, last time I checked, Andy Dalton played quarterback, and he does not play safe. He ain't making no interceptions. So what? And he got. He can't do every position on the field. No, he can't. But I expect that offense to perform in every game. But they did not. They this game they played against in Indianapolis. They didn't have AJ Green. Okay, we got other guys that can catch the they, ball. They're, they're professionals, and they they get paid to catch and the ball. And that's great. But none of them were AJ Green. I'm going to attribute that also to Marvin Lewis' soft play call. The plays he called in that in that game, they just looked like high school and college plays. Not even college plays, because college plays would have maybe gotten a little bit more offense out of the team, but they, they just looked like high school plays. And what, what I'm going to anticipate for next season is I think the NFL is going to go back to running the football. If you look at this year, it was – it's a lot of running backs by committees. Mm -hmm. I think you got to get back into running the football and stopping the run. I think that's a formula for winning the Super Bowl. If you look at it, that's been that was proven. It's proven. You got you have to be able to run the football and stop and stop the run. Well, when the Bengals were running the football against the Colts, they were being productive. It was when they was going to the pass is when they started. And also, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw this out here. Right? I'm a hometown guy. I'm a Cleveland Brown guy. And get Johnny Manziel some help. And I don't mean on the field, I mean off the field. I don't know if he's mentally stable enough. The future of the Cleveland organization is in rehab right now. And, you know, I, I best wishes to his family and Johnny Manziel, but I think that maybe being a quarterback in the NFL is a little bit much for him. Um, well, you know, maybe he's going to let his best friend LeBron James mentor him and kind of keep him out of trouble and steer him in the right path. Ho hopefully that, that'll happen. I, I hope so, too. <clears throat> but this is Against the Grain Sports. We're doing sports our way. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with our NBA analysis. And stay tuned. Against the Grain Sports, sports our way. <laughs> 